Question number one. In regards to count one of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballo not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number two. In regards to count two of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballo not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Tylee Ryan? Answer, guilty. Question number three. In regards to count three of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballo not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballo and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number four. In regards to count four, the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballo not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballo? Answer, guilty. Question number five. In regards to count five of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballo not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell? Answer, guilty. Question number six, in regards to count seven of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of grand theft? Answer, guilty. Dated this 12th day of May, 2023, signed by the presiding officer. All right, please be seated. Madam Clerk, thank you for reading the verdict into the record. At this time, let me just inquire of the jury, is this in fact your true and correct verdict? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Let me ask now from counsel, does the state wish to have the jury polled? We do not, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to have the jury polled? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, the jury will be polled at this time. Madam Clerk, if you would please indicate only by juror numbers of each of the jurors if this is their true and correct verdict individually. Juror number four, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, it is. Juror number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number six, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number eight, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number nine, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 10, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 11, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 12, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 13, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 14, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 15, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 16, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. All right, thank you ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The court does find it's a unanimous verdict in this case, so I will direct the clerk to record the verdict into the record of this case. We'll now have a closing jury instruction for our jurors and also those alternate jurors that are in attendance today. You have now completed your duties as jurors in this case and are discharged with the sincere thanks of this court. The question may arise as to whether you may discuss this case with the attorneys or with anyone else. For your guidance, the court instructs you that whether you talk to the attorneys or to anyone else is entirely your own decision. It is proper for you to discuss this case if you want to, but are you, you are not required to do so and you may choose not to discuss the case with anyone at all. If you choose to talk to someone about the case, you may tell them as much or little as you like about your deliberations or the facts that influenced your decision. If you decide to discuss the case with anyone, you should be careful to respect the privacy and feelings of your fellow jurors. You should limit your comments to your own perceptions and feelings if anyone persists in discussing the case over your objections or becomes critical of your service either before or after any discussion has begun, please report that to me. At this time, then, the court offers its sincere thanks to the jurors. I appreciate your patience and attentiveness throughout this lengthy trial. I also thank you again for upholding your important civic duty as jurors in this case. I'd also like to thank the attorneys who tried this case for your professionalism throughout the proceedings and in the pretrial motions that came before trial. 
At this time, then, the court will discuss briefly sentencing in this case. In Idaho, pursuant to Title 19, Chapter 25, a report is required to be prepared before sentencing called the pre-sentence investigation report. In a typical case, that report takes at least two months to prepare. In a case such as this, it will likely take longer. The court will inquire as to a pre-sentence investigator for the time frame required to prepare the report in this case. Upon getting an estimation, then the court will reach out to counsel for determining a date for sentencing. I'll just advise everyone that will likely be, I'm thinking, at least three months probably before that sentencing can be scheduled to have the report completed. The court will also uh, advise at this time then, upon conclusion of the proceedings, the defendant will be remanded back to the custody of the Ada County Sheriff at this time to be transferred to the Fremont County Sheriff for further proceedings in Fremont County for sentencing. The court will also instruct the clerk to collect any of the jurors' notes pursuant to Idaho Criminal Rule 24.1a. At this time then, the court will ask that the jurors and any alternates in attendance be excused from the courtroom. And I am going to direct that all in attendance here remain seated until such time as the jurors have been completely exited from the courtroom. And in addition, I'll let the jurors know there is additional information. That all right. Lori Vallow Daybell in this, what has become known as this doomsday cult case, has been found guilty of two counts of first degree murder in the killings of her two children, Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow, and one count of conspiracy to commit first degree murder in the death of her fifth husband's uh, first wife, Tammy. Daybell. I want to bring in Ariva Martin, criminal defense attorney, for some analysis on this. Uh, this jury deliberated Ariva for uh, over a couple of days, for about eight and a half hours. And, and obviously, these are pretty serious decisions that they made, but she has been found guilty of everything that she was charged with. Yeah, no surprise here, Brianna. This was such a tragic case. This is a mother who has been found guilty of killing her two children. Uh, as you said, she was married to her fifth husband, Chad Daybell, and they both have been charged in the murder of her two kids and the murder of his ex-wife. Uh, if you will recall, her two children disappeared and she refused to tell her family members. She refused to tell law enforcement or anyone where her children were. She went off to Hawaii and married uh, this husband. Uh, they both uh, allegedly were involved in some kind of religious cult. Uh, they believed they had been married in another life. She didn't put on a defense at this trial, but yet at the closing arguments, her lawyer argued that her husband, Chad Daybell, manipulated her and he was the cause for the death of her children, the murder of her children. He's facing his own murder trial. The death penalty uh, is at stake with respect to the charges against him, although Lori will face in all likelihood life in prison without the opportunity for parole, but a very sad case. And look, this isn't all of it. I mean, this is awful. These two beautiful children gone for what? For these uh, beliefs that this couple held. But you also have Lori Vallow Daybell's brother, uh, who's been accused in conspiracy to commit murders. Uh, you, you, uh, he, he died in December of 2019, uh, shot and killed her estranged husband, Charles Vallow. Right. So she is now facing a separate conspiracy charge in Arizona, a conspiracy to commit murder charge for her former husband's murder. Yeah, there are four people dead uh, as a result of Lori Vallow. Uh, the allegations are is that she manipulated her own brother as well as her husband to kill her two children and to kill her ex-husband and her husband's ex-wife, and all because of money. They said that she collected Social Security payments on her two children uh, after they were murdered, that she concealed their murder so that she could collect this money. This is a case that the prosecutors describe uh, that's about power, greed, and money. And quite simply, this was all about Lori Vallow's uh, manipulation to receive money. Apparently, she was angry because her ex-husband had changed her uh, as the beneficiary on an insurance policy that they had. They changed 
he changed her name to his sister's name. And I guess she vowed for that to never happen again. So she kills her children uh, to collect Social Security payments. At least that's the argument that the prosecutors made and these juries uh, accept this jury accepted in finding her guilty on all four counts.